Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A podcast. I'm your boy, Jason Avon. I'm here with my main man, Quentin. Say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Good to be back. It's game game week, man. Game week. Ready to go. <laughs> Ready to roll. Finally get some NFL action. Um, coming real soon. Who we got who we have tomorrow? A Thursday night game. We got the Dallas the, and the Dallas Tampa, and the Bucks. Tampa Bay. Yeah, get some get some action. I'm hoping I, I kind of feel I'm, like why do we have to watch Dallas on the on the opening week, man? Why do they get to to shine on the on the first game? They don't, you, listen, as as much as as much as I dislike Dallas, they 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 sell they sell tickets, man. They get eyes. They they're, they're as much as we don't like it, they're the most watched football team in America every year, and they're the most valuable team in America. That's crazy, man. It is. It's just true. I, but I dislike everything about them. <laughs> so um, I am Jason Avant. Again, like I said before, I forgot that my name was Jason Avant, so I'll speak it <laughs> one more time to you guys. Um, this is the Q&A podcast. I'm a little tired, as you can see, but we're pressing through for game week. And we have some exciting topics for you guys. Before we get into the topics, we're going to do a little bit of house cleaning. I want to say shout out to Inside the Birds platform for giving us this opportunity to Adam and to Jeff and to Hunter and everyone that's responsible for this show and to you, the fans that are tuning into this show. We appreciate everything that you do. Continue to send your questions to Inside the Birds um, at gmail.com. Also, check us out. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Amazon Music, also YouTube channel Inside the Birds. And let's get right to the topics. We are talking about the season opener queue. We have the season opener, season opener coming up against the Falcons. Now, historically, we have not done well versus the Falcons down in Atlanta. I think we are, out of the last four, I think we're three. We've lost three out of the last four down in Atlanta. And we haven't – Atlanta is not like the a sports city. When you think about, like, sports cities, when you think about Green Bay, Wisconsin, you think about Philadelphia, you think about Chicago and New York, we don't think about Atlanta in that way, in that light. So how is it that Atlanta gives us so many problems? Um, I don't get it. They have a hard time selling out Hawks games and Falcons games, but some way, in some form, they show up against the Eagles. What's that about? <laughs> The, I I have no <laughs> I have no clue. Um, and I guess my my only my only um, answer to that question would would be it, it has to be quarterback play. It really has mm. to be that Matt Ryan somehow has some kind of uh, special horseshoe <laughs> or magic potion that he <laughs> he he. Uh, but even I mean, this goes back to even when you know before Matt Ryan was there, and so it's it's really a weird thing, and 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 it isn't it is not a, fo- a, a football town, let alone a sports town. Maybe you could say you can make the case for the you know the Braves; they've had a, a storied history with the Atlanta Braves. But other than that, it, it's not a big sports town, so it really is weird to me. And you know, I don't really have an answer to why why we why we struggle down there so much. I mean, it's just it's just kind of uh, it's kind of weird, and especially this year. I mean, this team isn't. If you look at them on paper, they're, they're not that impressive, but there's always something that, that goes wrong when we go down there. Goes yeah. Wrong. yeah, so we had them beat a couple of years ago, and Nelson uh, dropped the ball on the left sideline. Yeah, um, and we had them beat one time, I believe, um, late in the game, and, and, and we end up fumbling. I remember the shine, you know, catching one of the defensive ends, but um, we blew that game late as well. So I think that when we go down to Atlanta, I think we underestimate them each and every time, right? And the crowd, even though, um, you know, it's not known to be a sports city, I think that they get up for Philadelphia. And I think it goes back to the algae crumpler days where you had to go through Philadelphia when when they had Michael Vick and um, the Eagles were the team. 
and they had to go through them. So it kind of created this animosity and the city kind of felt that. And I think that still is a rivalry game to the Atlanta Falcons and it's not necessarily a rivalry game to us. So I think the fans get hyped for it. We know that national television is going to be there. Usually Matty Ice brings his game that day. And um, it's usually an exciting ball game. And I think with that, with with the, the, the new stadium, that crowd noise, that bubble, it just makes everything louder. And um, I think they have great acoustics there. It's hard to hear. It's hard to play. So I think it's one of those sneak up games that it shouldn't be um, a surprise anymore since they've been kicking our butt on the road down there for so long. But let's let's transition into like the season opening mindset. Um, back when you played, when you had Jim Johnson, when you had Spagnola, when you had Ron Rivera as defensive coaches, Sean McDermott and many more, um, you had Todd Bowes as well, right? So we have all of these different guys. What was the message for them going into the season? Was there something different between, you know, training camp, week 12, week one? What was the formula? What was their message and how was it different going into the opening of the season? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. The, the the biggest thing, and I'll never forget, it was my first year making the team. And, you know, when you go through training camp, you have, you know, I forget what the rosters used to be. You'd have uh, close to, you know, 80, 80 people out there, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> now, I remember the first the first practice that I had after the cuts, showed the practice. And the thing that, that kind of just threw me off was, like, how quiet it was. Mm, like, when yeah. you showed up on the field, it was, like, dead silent. But, like, when we went to practice mode and like actually started running, it was like an, a, another level. And this is now, this is, I was just a special teams guy. But so mm -hmm. on my first year was, you know, Troy Vinson was still here, Bobby Taylor, you know, Lito and, and Sheldon were um, first year, uh, second year players. So we had a more veteran team. And so I just remember just like the, the tension was like, it, you could, you could, it's corny as it sounds, you could cut the tension with a knife. Like, yeah. from practice to you got on the field, it was like, it was game time. It was like, it was a different level, right? And so, um, you know, and then coaching staff wise, you know, with the coaches, the coaches' mindsets was always more aggressive. It was definitely more focused. And um, it just seemed like everybody was just on edge all week, like yeah. all week. And it wasn't until that, that Friday practice where you have the half day kind of half day practice you go through everything and it wasn't until after that friday practice where it seemed like the tension was let loose just a little yeah. bit just a little bit to that friday night and then you came back in saturday morning and then you had your saturday night meetings and then it was like back ramped back up even 110 percent. so it was it was really a weird thing but it was something you get used to really quickly yeah. like how was it you know what what do you think what was it like for the offense i know defensively that's what it kind of felt like what about you guys so so when it when it like so we start training for the opener and um, OTA so right the end of OTA so um, the off, off season training activities right so at the end of that like that last week of of OTAs is when they start introducing like the first game against the Falcons and then division opponents. So you get kind of a, a glimpse of what they run. And if you've played the team before, you played the defensive coordinator before, you kind of know what's happening. And I knew what blitz would happen. And I would know based on the, the defensive coordinator, you get kind of a, a Rolodex of, of, of different coverages and blitzes and things of that nature so you can get used to it. So they started it then, but then you – you kind of set it aside for training camp. And in the first two weeks of training camp, that's making a team time, right? So you come into camp, it's about making a team. It's competitive as possible. You're going against offense and defense. You're trying to make the team. After that two-week period in training camp, you kind of really know who made the team, who, who hasn't made the team, pretty much. There's still a few people on the bubble, but after that, the offense goes to um, the first game of the season. Right. We start to see cover four. We start to see cover five, whatever that team is playing. We start to see those coverages, those looks, those techniques from the DBs. We're telling them. I used to tell the guy if, if I'm going against somebody that I thought was, um, you know, 
that 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 played a particular way. I will, hey, listen, I want you to shave me on on in this coverage. I want you to shave me right here. You're outside. You're in the wrong spot. Move over there. Don't let me get an inside release. Right. So whatever it may be. And I would kind of help those guys along so I can so I can get me ready for the game. So I would say that th the difference is, is that in training camp, when you first start training camp, you're running your offense, you're running your plays. It's all about getting better and competing against the defense. Mm -hmm. When regular season starts, everything gets like this, yeah. right? We don't have to learn 22 install. There's a tight, compact game plan. Like 22 installs is like a playbook this big. But now that playbook gets like this yeah. for the game. It gets very, very small. You know what you're doing. Guys don't have to think. They don't. In training camp, you're putting them at X. You're putting them at Y. You're putting them at E. You're putting them at all, all over the place to see how fast he's going to learn, right? But when the game is going, he's going to be at X this whole time, so he doesn't have to think. That's the only thing that he has to do, right? right? So the coach is making it compact so you can play faster. So that's the difference between, you know, preseason and then that first game you begin to see that everything is detailed toward them we have a base offense but there's little wrinkles in it that's just designed for that team like oh we're playing a falcon so we may have a we always had a play that was named after the team you ever noticed that <laughs> we always had a play that was named after the team so falcon would be in against the falcon packer would be in versus Packer. like we always had wrinkles for that team uh -huh. so I that like would be it. that would be the difference now when it came to when it came to just Coach Reed or um, whoever coached, you know, Rivera or, or Chip or whoever it is, like with younger coaches, you begin to see like that they press a little bit more. We have a young coach in Nick Sirianni. Um, when coaches when coaches are tense and coaches are feeling the pressure, the players feel the pressure. So the best thing a coach can do is trust that his his um his coaching is working and take it easy right you yeah. you focus on you know you work doing practice you get on them you get on them when the game start just take it easy and 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 be yourself let your personality show because if you're tight the team's going to be tight if yeah. you're happy the team's going to be happy if you're intense the team's going to be intense you're that leader and if you're an emotional guy that's going up and down the team is going to go like that so um i'm hoping to see from nick seriani me uh nick seriani um, an even kill, uh, optimistic um, vibe from him because if he's pressing too much, the team is going to press. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially game one. I mean, it's this is the, to me, this is the perfect example for, this is the perfect time for a coach to kind of really put his um, his his philosophy and his his mindset on display for not only, you know, us fans and, and, and us, but, but more importantly for his players to really yeah. find out how, you know, how does he prep this week? Um, if things don't go right during the during the game, how will mm -hmm. he adjust? You know, are you going to go on the sideline and just curse me out? Or are you going to try to coach me? Are you going to try to get me through this slump? Or if things are going well, are you going to be like, hey, we're going to the Super Bowl? Like, so this is going to be a good test for, for Sirianni as a as a coach and really for his players to kind of learn more about him. Because I, I really I still really feel like with, with the preseason, I don't I don't think we really know um, – we don't know anything. What to expect through this from this coaching staff yet. But we'll see when the real bullets start flying, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know anything. All we know is we're going to give up about 50 points if, if Gannon plays <laughs> the same on, defense as <laughs> he played during the preseason. I can count on that. The over and under that the Eagles 50. Yes. <laughs> They're going to so, go 50. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we play the same defense and, and we don't bring out yeah. the real Oh, wrinkles. yeah. If we don't, yeah. We better yeah. have. We better have it better look like a bunch of kids <laughs> was jumping on that bed. That I saw how many wrinkles I want to see in this defense, in this, defense, right. in this offense, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So right before training, right, right, right after training camp, right before the final cuts, usually right before the final cuts, Mr. Louie has a barbecue at his house. What do you think about that barbecue? Do you think it's like the last minute? barbecue before we go and die barbecue or you think it's like sincere that he's like appreciative of the hard work or you just saying it's like it's a sympathy barbecue what do, what do you think it is <laughs> to me because it changed right so look let me before i say that because it changed because it used to be after everyone made the team and yeah. then they start creeping it up before everyone's made the team and now you're like dude is this the, like my my last meal <laughs> what <laughs> That's what it turned into, right? Yeah. So, it, 
first of all, it's always a, a class class affair. It's a lot of fun. Um, there's always mm -hmm. really good food and um, you know really good music. There's usually a Jamaican band, so it's really relaxed you know, kind of laid back vibe. And it was at his house for years. Um, I'm not obviously going to say where it was at, but, you know, it was just a, a really good time. You know, you just, you go up and Coach Reed's rule, you know, always listen, you got to show up, right? There was no, there was no, this is the owner of the team. You're not, if you don't show up <laughs> to yeah. anything the owner's having, you might as well just go on and just keep walking, right? So yeah. everybody showed up, you hung out, got to see, you know, it was really cool because you get to see the coaches in a different light because they got their families there. You know, you get to see the players, they bring their families there. You get to kind of talk to the kids and play around. So it's always a good thing, but there's always in the back of your mind, you, you look over and you're like, dang, he ain't going to be here next week. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't going to be here next week. So eat up, guys. Eat this good food. Eat, up, eat, up. Just, eat this good food. <laughs> Cause you, you're gonna be out the out the out the door soon, you know. And then yeah. the weird part too is like there was, you know, especially me the first year and the second year, and then you know every now and then you start thinking, is this is this gonna be my last my last barbecue at Mister Lowry's house? Yeah, my this, last this my last meal, you know. So you just never know. So um, exactly, it's always a lot of fun, man, and and uh, it's a good good way to end the the training camp. It was kind of. That is funny that it it did start the change to like it started moving up right because my first year was after it was after the final cut so it's like oh Mr. Louis went you at this house for a barbecue it's like oh okay cool I made the team and I remember driving down that's the first time I ever drove down like Gerard Avenue I thought I was I was like man did we, Mr. Louis living in here? <laughs> yeah. but I'm not gonna say where but I was I was driving I was like man what are we, what are we doing and uh, <laughs> no offense to anybody out there. But uh, the, that was my first time, my first time being in Philly. Um, and I remember driving down there and I remember getting to him. I was like maybe 45 minutes late because it was so many turns and stuff. And um, I remember getting there and the guy, you know, valet, it was just a class affair. And in mm -hmm. um, and the, and the Jamaican band is a staple. Mm -hmm. um, everyone is counting the time, though, as a player. The player, <laughs> the player, you're like, Look, OK, I, let me let me go and make sure that he sees me. Yeah, you gotta say hi. Say <laughs> hi to him. Say hi to Howie. Say hi to the coaches. Say hi to everybody, and then leave when nobody is looking, right? So, because <laughs> you you on time, right? So I'm I'm, I'm down there. I'm like, yeah, I got about forty five minutes before I can go get me some sleep. Because the last thing you want to do is spend an extra day with them. You didn't see them for the past forty five thirty the past thirty days. Every day we've seen each other. So the last thing I need is on my off day to be kicking it with y'all in the whole hour. So I'm getting out of here in forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Yeah. That's why it was cool. It was cool. like when you started having kids too. Like the kids, oh, they 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 getting tired. We got we got to get them home. You yeah, know, get them home. All the time, got you know what I mean. The baby, so that's a built in excuse when you have the kids with you too. Yeah, and they sitting there when you when you pull up, checking you off the list and checking you know, on. I'm like, man, come on, give us a break. <laughs> All right, over the years, over the years, is there a season opener? that kind of stands out to you, something that you'll never forget and how it uh, kind of affected you in your career going forward, maybe a mentality, maybe a possession, maybe something special. I, I have a few of them that will always ring in my mind. I Man, I, I have quite a few of them, but <clears throat> I would say my two, my two most craziest ones, and I tell, I've told this story a few times, but um, my my first game ever um, home opener was the open in the link, right? The the new Lincoln Financial Field. That was my first game. Man, you we played the Bucks, right? On the uh, <laughs> night. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to run out of the <laughs> I know I'm old, right? No, I'm, I'm messing with you. Kevin but Hart. No, I, 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 I got grades popping up, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so like I'm going on the kickoff. I see Sylvester Stallone standing. He's flexing, and you know the 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 fireworks going off. I'm like, oh man, this is crazy, man. You know, and it was a tough game. We ended up losing that game, right? This was the game. So Simeon Rice, I'll never forget this too. Simeon Rice, the year before, um, was at the Pro Bowl, and 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 Coach Reed and his staff was the the Pro Bowl coaches, and they something must have happened. Simeon Rice got in trouble and he got sent home. So at the end of the game, the Bucks won the game, and he's like. He's like dancing and like looking at Andy and 
you know, taunting him and stuff. And I'm like, man, what the hell is going on? This is supposed to be at the NFL. Like, what is this? <laughs> you know, so I come to find out a little bit later about all that other stuff. But the thing that was crazy about this game, this was my first introduction to the Philly, the, the Eagle fans. So we lose the game, right? We're walking off the, off the stadium, off the field. And I hear just all the booze, the booze are coming, right? So I look in the stands and there was this lady. She looked like she was... She's like what you would think like a, in 2021, like a, a Karen would look like, right? This is a, this was a, a, a 2000, 2003 Karen, right? So she, I'm looking up, she looks, she looks at me and she's like, you guys suck. And she takes a full drink and just chucks it at me, right? Now I dodge it and I'm like, and I'm looking at stands and I'm like, what the hell was that? So I started to go walk over to say something to her. One of the older vets grabbed me and was like, man. He's like, don't even, don't even say nothing. Don't even, uh, say, don't even say nothing. And I was like, this was my first, this was my first experience with with Eagle fans in terms of like close corners and like getting, getting stuff thrown at me, getting booed. And I was like, man. So I, I built up a an immunity to that very early in my career, right? Yeah. The other big game for me opener was um <laughs> was uh God, what year was it? Two was it two thousand seven? Um, Which one? The Plexco one? Uh, was it? Yeah, with the the Falcons, right? Was that 07 when Troy got kicked out? That was 04. So, that was 04. Was no, nah, that wasn't 04. 04, 05. Anyway, so I forget which, what year it was, but. 05. This was the first year that um I think Ike ended up in Atlanta the year before, or he signed with Atlanta and he came. So we went down there for the first game and. You know, Ike's at the middle of the field and we're arguing and try it and try gets kicked out the game. And then uh, so we go into we go into the pregame and um, Mike Labinjo was our start. And Mike, rest in peace, was, you know, he passed away a couple years ago. Great guy was mm -hmm. one of our teams. But he was a he barely like he was a, a rookie free agent, ended up making the team. And I just remember <laughs> we going and the first thing he said, well, Mike, you're up. And I just never forget looking at the look on Mike's face. He was just like like everything. He was thinking about every single play that he was about to run and how he, had, <laughs> He's not ready. he was he was like not nah, he was not ready. I mean, imagine you you're a you're a special teams guy. You you know, you barely making the team, and then you go from thinking that all you gotta do is kick off, kick off, return and punt to being a starter for a full game. But yeah, <laughs> he was so scared. No, I know he was. He's like, come on, coach. He probably had, he probably had um, what is that, uh, TJ Dockett down there too? Is that trying to oh, try to I tackle forgot, him? Yeah. Oh, Dockett, <laughs> shoot. Uh, God, what, what was his name? Um, there was no was All Star there? No, 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 no. The Falcons. I'm not that Bucks. old man. Come on now. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you was out there with Moses and them. Yeah. <laughs> Larry, Larry, Larry Zonka. Yeah, Larry Zonka out there when you play this team. <laughs> no, <man. laughs> No, that's good. So my right. my my opener would probably be, um, dang, we lost a lot of openers when I played. Dang, right. when I was thinking about, right. it, we lost a lot of openers. We, um, we always rebounded. We we always rebounded. You know what it is because training camp was so training brutal. Camp. Yeah. Training camp was brutal, um, and we never had legs at the beginning of the season. We didn't get get our legs back until he he would um, lessen practice in yeah. the middle of the season. But um, the the 2006 Giants game, um, because I've never seen a quarterback, and, I, and 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 I'm not a big Eli fan, but I've never seen a quarterback take a beating like Eli <laughs> did yeah. in that 2006 game. When I say when I say Jaquay and Javon and Mike P. And Trent was Trent. On yeah, team. Trent. They were destroying this guy. I'm talking about like they hit him. I, I can't remember how many times he was sacked, but they hit him. It seemed like every single play, he couldn't breathe. He couldn't do anything. And I was like, dude, this is his like second game. I don't know, like second season, like one of the first times, like starting this. I was like, dude, I don't know if any quarterback can take this beat. And sure enough, they figured out the protection at the end of the game. Yep. Jim ran zero blitz about six times in a row, yeah. and Plexico. he stepped right up in the middle, threw it to Plexico, win the game. I was like, man, wow, I don't know if I've ever seen a quarterback 
take that much punishment and respond like that, you know? So I was like, oh, we're going to have some good games versus the Giants, you know, going forward. Now we yeah. owned them after a while, but, um, you know, but I, I remember that game. And I also remember, I remember my first game against, uh, against uh, opener versus the Packers. The one, you know, G. Lou, they, they try to put G. Lou at, at return. At part time. Yeah. <laughs> that was not, not part time. That was so, not fair. <laughs> so, so, let, so, so, so for those that out there that, that, that just doesn't know, G. Lou can catch, right? But catching a punt is totally different. Yeah. I hate catching punts. Because when you're when you're catching a punt, you have to read the nose of the ball. And yep. it's very, very hard to see. If the ball, if the nose is like up towards you, it may drop short, right? If it's if it's turning over, it's gonna be like long. Like you gotta know what you're getting into. And it takes a while. You can't just throw a receiver out there and say, Oh, he's gonna catch it. In high school, maybe because there was line drive punts a lot, but college and the pros, that thing goes up so high. And you have to be able to read the punt. So they put G. Lou out there. G. Lou was dropping them things so <laughs> – dropping them like they're hot. And, uh, but I remember because I stayed up all night. I'm like, man, I got Charles Wilson, dude. I got, I'm from Michigan. I got Charles Wilson. I'm up all night. I can't sleep. I can't think. I'm like, dude, I'm about to play against Charles Wilson. Like, he's yeah. like our hero. At the yeah. University of Michigan, right? So we we watch all of his tape. I, I know all of his one on ones from college, right? So I know his technique. I know his hand he's gonna stab with. I know his mindset. I know when he's gonna quit gym. I know all of these things. But I'm like, dude, I'm playing against freaking Charles Woodson, right? <laughs> and if I can get open on Charles Woodson, I can get open on anybody. So I took it like I'm like I'm about to kill this dude. <laughs> and um, and we get out there, and sure enough, because back in those days they would put the best the best corner in the slot. And I'm like, sure enough, here you he come, here in the slot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Get him. Out route. Bam. Good, good job, little fellas, on a, on a few yard game. <laughs> like, okay. Next one, third down, third and 10, third and something like that. In, out, boom, fall down. Got like a 40 yard game. I was like, dude, I can play in the NFL. And I caught a touchdown that same series. I was like, dude, I can play in the NFL. <laughs> I'll be Charles Wilson, my hero. So I, I'll never forget that. Um, and that was the moment because that was um, my second year. My first year was plagued by in uh, injury, so I never knew if I could, you know, yeah. um, I never knew um, how much I had. But when I played against Charles Wilson that season open, I was like, oh, dude, if I can stay healthy, I'm going to be around a long time. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. But I, I'll never forget that. So that season over, we lost that one, too. That was the but, game. Yeah, we lost that one, too. That we, was we, used to, we used to lose a lot at the beginning of the season. Was that the game when with Leonard Weaver, right? When he got his his um uh, his leg? No, that game we were at Green Bay when when G Lou when G Lou was having a problem because remember Reno yeah, yeah. was Reno came the next the next week. Yeah. I remember you know the 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 craziest thing, and this is this is this is this is um this is pretty eerie. Um, during that time, Leonard Weaver was my roommate. Um when he had that knee injury, he was my roommate, like for road games. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember having a dream that he got his, that, that he had his knee hurt. It was very, it was very like eerie. I had a dream about it. And literally a chill came down my body when I saw the play happening. Like I was already like, cause I was like right here, like on the sideline, like looking at it. The, I was like closer than the line, like the, than, than the side, like the sideline official. I'm like looking right at it. And when I seen the angle and I seen it happening in slow motion, I was like, oh, that's it. Yeah. I was like, that's it. Yeah. And, but I remember that what a talented player like Leonard was like he was oh fast, God. strong, can catch it. Like he would have, yeah, Sorry. can block. He was explosive. Like, like he he would have been one of the better fullbacks that ever played his game if he didn't get hurt. You know what I mean? He just would have been. He was a very very explosive player. Like yeah. I've never seen a dude with with his body type that explosive. I've yeah. never seen it. Yeah. I still to this day I haven't seen anything like it. I mean, he talk about you know talk about a guy if. There's very few people that if I was playing against that, I would want to tackle one-on-one. -on -one, and he's not one of them, right? Yeah. Adrian Peterson, I would not want to tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Leonard Weaver, like very few guys that you can say are like that explosive, that that powerful, that shifty, that fast, that 
they can do it all. And he was one of those guys, man. It was a shame to see, you know, what see happened. that happen, man. He was, and you know what it is? It like the, it just didn't make sense because he was heavy, right? His body type was like a heavy person, but he can get off the ground and it was light on his feet. It it, it just didn't make sense because when he when he hit you, it was like, dude, like, <laughs> like you're you're like heavy handed. Like when you push him, he's heavy. And I'm like, dude, it's just a, it doesn't make sense. The two just don't make sense. And God just blessed him with a little extra. That's all I can say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Let's get into the the game itself, Q. The game itself. Eagles versus the Falcons. Now, if we go by what the bookkeepers and uh, the line makers are saying, right? They're saying that the Falcons should win this game three and a half point favorites. Home field advantage. Both teams were bad last year. Eagles 4 11 and 1, Falcons 4 and 12, so on and so forth. Now, when you go up and down the roster, the Eagles have the overall better roster than the Falcons. Now, that's based off last year. We don't know the development of new players. We don't know if guys have advanced and got better over the offseason. We won't know that until Sunday. But based on um, a few factors. When you look at quarterback position, you got to give that nod to the Falcons. When you look at the receiver position, you got to give that nod to the Falcon. After that, it's a toss up because we don't know how good Kyle Pitts is. If Kyle Pitts is anything as good as we think he can be, that may be a matchup in their favor. Even though we have two tight ends, right? If they got a guy that can be, you know, George Kittle-ish, can be Gronk-ish, can be Tyler, Kel uh, 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 Travis Kelsey-ish, like, that would be tough. But I will say that our tight ends overall are better than them. But the potential for Kyle Pitts, if he if that kid's a player, it's, 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 that's, that's a tough position. Everywhere else, we're better than them. Yeah. Um, and that's my thought process going into the game. Um, wh what's your thought process going into it? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, you know, obviously Matt Matt Ryan is is still phenomenal. He threw for forty five hundred yards last year. Um, you know, That's I, every year. Yeah, Calvin Calvin Ridley. I think um, obviously, I think with Julio yeah, not being there, I think it's going to be. Team. You think he's going to have as good a year without Julio on the other side? I mean, I, this, I think he benefited from the role yeah. coverage quite a bit, right? So yeah. we're. I don't know if he's necessarily going to be. There is nobody that, that wants to cover this dude, Q. Yeah. Not, not listen, there's nobody that wants to cover him. Like look like the little dudes, like he's he's the little quick guy that that wants the smoke. Usually little little quick dudes don't want yeah. like to get near you and touch you and all that stuff. He's not running around people. He's trying his best to break you off and make you look bad. And he's fast, right? So he's a great route runner. Not a, not a good one. He's a great one. He's top five in the league at route running. So will he have a, a – yes, he's going to have 100 over 100 catches if he stays healthy. That's okay. going to happen. All right. So, yeah. And they're, right. they're going to be able to see, see it because I'm putting my money up on him versus Jalen Ramsey just because the kid can stop and start. And little guys like that, Jalen Ramsey has problems with Tyree Kill, those things. Now Tyree Kill is a different level of blazer, but mm -hmm. really can run. But those little quick guys like that, no, no DB wants to see that. You rather see a big old guy than a little quick dude that 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 can run routes. It, they make you look bad. Oh yeah. They they have you on sports team. <laughs> I hate them little guys. <laughs> I'm a little guy. I'm a little guy. I didn't, I didn't like going against some little guys, man. So I agree. Yeah. But no, and and to me, the other thing that that really um, this game is going to come down to, well, I'm hoping it comes down to, is 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 how well does our O line and D line play, right? Mm -hmm. If our offensive line um, plays the way we all expect them to play, and we run the ball and actually run the ball, I think we'll be. I think we're actually going to do better than a lot of people are giving us credit for. And if our D line, <clears throat> if they play well. Um, Atlanta's quarterback is, uh, I mean, uh, running back is Mike Davis, a guy that I don't really know much about. Um, you know, he's a, he's been in the league for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I don't really know much about him does not mean that he's he's not going to be a factor. It just means that I don't know whether or not his his game, what his game's going to look like. But 
I think it's safe to say that if our D line comes ready to play and we hold our gaps, we'll be all right. So I think the the big key factor is obviously Kyle Pitts and what his game is going to come for um, for the for the Falcons offense and and really if our D line and, and our coaching staff comes, I mean our O line and our coaching staff comes with the mindset of actually running the football and mm-hmm. controlling the trenches. I think if we do those two things well. I think we win the game. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think the key to the game will always be the offensive line. I think that's where if we're in sync, if the left side of the line and Isaac and Malata plays well, um, which all indications show this offseason that they will play well, that we should be able to run the football on, on teams that will, especially teams like this where you got to deal with basically one notable player on the D line, which is Grady Jarrett, right? Grady, That's Grady the only Jared, player that I know um, on their D line. Yeah. And, and he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a low, he's a, ma- a, a mammoth of a man. And, and on there at the second level, you got, you got um, Deion Jones, um, who's a yeah. baller at linebacker and can fly. You got Fowler, you got Fowler who's a, a good, you know, he's. Yeah, you got Dante Fowler. He was, he was player. drafted high. Yeah, and he but he but he's hit and miss, yes, right? So right. you don't yeah, know. Very true. So yeah. that's that's it. He's he was drafted high. We know that he's explosive and has talent, but he's he's hit or miss. He hasn't proven himself um, to the extent that he should be in a top three. Was he picked like number three overall or something like that? Yeah, he, was, well, he, he was, was very very he was high, super high. Yeah, yeah, super high. So so based on that, he hadn't panned out the way that everybody wants. He got um, Christian Terrell from from Clemson there in the secondary and you also have Fabian Monroe if we can't take advantage of Fabian Monroe <laughs> and he got a pick on us last year when he was with the Redskins which pissed me off um I still remember to this day John Hightower um you know sinking back on his route and then not attacking the football Carson's nine million years late and inside and yeah. threw a pick right to him but yeah. if we can't take advantage of this player um out there like we got we got problems <laughs> like we we have problems because because this guy is not an outside corner and he's starting for them and 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 and, and him starting bothers me right he's a nickel and yeah. I'm not saying that he can't go and, and be a substitute out there but there's no way that we can't make him pay there's no way that Devonte Devonte Smith doesn't make this dude pay out there so when I look at the matchups the offensive line has to dominate a uh, no name defensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, we're one of the better offensive line, and that's and that, and that right there is the bottom line. We know that our defensive line comes up and plays every game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get pressure. You got a young sweat, got a young, um, not a young Barnett, but a motivated Barnett. You got old faithful and Fletch and and Brandon. You got you got super old old faithful and 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 Ryan Kerrigan. <laughs> right. So <laughs> hey, you firing shots at the old folks today, man. <laughs> hey, we old together, man. Some people just going. Like, who did I see today? They're stealing. Danny Amendola. I saw I say Danny. Oh, he he's signed stealing. with the he's Texans. Signed the Texans today. That's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's keep why going. we got some good knees. <laughs> keep we got going, some good man. knees. You keep, you keep going. Yeah, man. <laughs> Somebody in there stealing. I'm going to get Make them kick all, you out, Danny. Make them yep, kick you out. My, my all my all robbery team. All robberies. <laughs> Jason Peters, number one on the list. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's right. He's in Chicago, right? I think we talked about He's that. He's in Chicago, Chicago, yeah. Yeah, they getting, they getting over, but, but power <laughs> to them. So, so when I think about the game, I think about, I think about that. Um, I think about our offensive line dominating their defensive line. I think of our defensive line dominating their offensive line and our tight ends being an impact in the game. Calvin really no answer. Um, Slay, Slay's nice. <clears throat> Calvin really is a different animal. You know, we got no answer and, and, and hopefully we can see what Kyle Pitts is about. Right. So yeah. special teams it's indoors. I don't see, it being much of a factor, special teams. So what happens, ladies and gentlemen, early in the season indoors with them being able to move the ball up an extra five yards, most kickers can kick it through the end zone. There's no win. So you should make most of your kicks unless they ask you to kick it from 60 yards, right? There's no, there's perfect conditions. So usually special teams kind of wash each other out in games like this. Usually that's what you normally have. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
And then early on, you know, obviously return game can be a factor, not necessarily on kickoffs, but, you know, punt returns and, and things like that. But again, in the dome, it's probably not going to be as big a factor. Maybe punts. Even though it's early in the season. Yeah. Yeah. That's Maybe true. punts, like whoever can get in the punt return game. But as far as kickoffs and kickoff returns, that ball is out of the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I used to hate running back, running back. I'm like, he's going to kick it out of the bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Harbaugh had the rule. You had to sprint all the way to the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. No matter where it was. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's why you hated me because I was stopped <laughs> yeah. at the 20. Like no, nah, I got. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that 24 offense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man. The big question, Q. Mm -hmm. The big question. This one's for you. I'm not gonna even. You gotta take this one. All right. Uh -huh. And it's about your boy. You put a little pressure on him, really. And you say, <laughs> I want to see more from from Jonathan Gannon. Yeah, what man. the hell are we going to see from Jonathan Gannon? Are we going to see what we've seen in this preseason? Are we going to see a vanilla defense, the second coming to Jim Schwartz? Are we going to see that again? What is going on? I'll tell you what, if if we do see that, it won't be it won't be here for long. <laughs> because, you know, when you so we can't. We can't go back to that. It's got to be. We have to. This is 2021 in the NFL. We're talking about quarterbacks get iPads with yeah. your coverage after every single drive, right? Yeah. There's no excuse for staying in the same basic coverage. And I don't think we're going to see it. I think we're definitely going to see the real deal now. Okay. Um, judging from everything that I've I've read about him, I've seen, obviously, he kept his, his cards close to his chest. He didn't want to show too much. Now I want to see, I want to see the real deal. I want to see some some movement from the line. I want to see some creative blitz schemes. I want to see some some movement in the secondary, even the coverages. I don't want to see let's line up in cover two, let the quarterback and everybody know in the stadium that we're playing cover two, and yeah. let's just hope for the best. You know, I want to see safeties rocking from cover cover two two shell rocking down to cover one or cover three mm -hmm. showing opposite i want to show i want to see roll 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 blitz where you're rolling over to the top or the, rolling to one side and you got a corner coming off the edge like i want to see some creativity so and i think obviously i don't think that in game one we're going to see everything that they have but i just want to see a little bit more let's help these guys out especially in the secondary you know i know it's the it's the falcons Let's let's open it up a little bit, man. Come on, it's time to it's time to show, right? I Don't agree. Think? I agree. So here's here's the thing: when it comes to veteran quarterbacks, which Matty Ice is, he's seen everything. There's yes. nothing you can throw at him that he hasn't seen. The only way you can get to guys like this is pressure. Yep. You can't with a veteran quarterback that has the arm talent and the ability that he has. Has he won a Super Bowl? No. He's been to a Super Bowl and should have won that Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, he played extremely well and didn't do anything to, 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 to lose that game. Yeah. Now, with that being said, he thrives in every good quarterback from Drew Brees to Matty Ice to Matthew Stafford to Dak Prescott to Jalen Hurts to whoever. If you allow that person to sit back and see zone all day, they're going to pick it apart. They That's what they do. That's what NFL quarterbacks do, the good ones. The only time you can sit in zone and confuse people is usually with young quarterbacks. Yep. That's it. Older quarterbacks, you have to get pressure. You got to throw off timing. That's getting in people's face. That's exotic blitzing. That's rolling coverage. That's press coverage. That's all of that. Yep. And that's the only way you can beat them. So hopefully our guys got their Wheaties going to be able to run with Ridley and Pitts. And uh, and so, but I'm looking forward to it. You know what I'm looking forward to, Q? What's that? I'm looking forward to Steve Nelson because we know we're going to get in there in Darius Slay, right? Yeah. I'm looking forward to Zach McPherson. I'm looking forward to um, Maddox. Yeah, I'm, I'm Maddox in the slot. I'm I'm looking forward to whoever those guys are. Because you asked the question earlier about pits, how we're going to cover them, how how is that going to happen? You asked it offline. How are we going to cover them? Nickel. Yep. Rodney. Yep. Boxing. That's when we're going to be able to cover them. But it's going to be 
through a big, tough, physical nickel. And I think the only person that can do that on our roster probably is McPherson. Like, I don't know. I know Avante can run with him. Yeah. Can he get in that? That's so, right. Game? But my thing is, though, now he's 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 still a rookie, right? He's still a rookie. He, he's still a rookie. He may not know all the little. He may not know how good just yet. I'm just guessing week mm-hmm. one. He may not know all the little tricks and things like that, right? Yeah. How to use your body, how to, how to, you know, push off low at the right time, how to, how to body a, a, a jump ball on a, on a smaller guy. Actually, no, I'm just joking. He did that in college. He did. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let me tell you this though. Yes. Are there going to be nuances that he doesn't know, but usually superior athletes figure that out. And I think a younger player that don't know is dangerous because they don't mm. know what they don't know. Yeah, they don't they they don't they don't respect they don't know that you are, you know, Darius Slay and you don't supposed to get the ball caught on. They don't know any of that. They know you that's as true. a number. They've that's heard true. stories about you, but it ain't nothing to them. They don't have ex- intimate experience with you. So younger players um they can either be good or bad. Usually during the playoffs is always bad, but <laughs> during the regular season you never know. <laughs> <laughs> So here, so let's go. I'm going to continue with this because now we're now we're talking about matchups, which I think is cool. So here's one thing: like, what do you think? So we got two first year head coaches, Arthur yeah. Smith, Falcons. He's a former OC for Titans. Um, he looking at his past, he's mostly a defensive guy. He's only well early on, he was more of a defensive guy. Um, I would say probably in the last few years, he's he kind of made the switch over to offense, and he's done a really good job with with the Titans. Then we got Sirianni, who's you know we all know about his 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 um, rep his um, resume. So, <clears throat> what do you what is, in your mindset? What do you think the the battle is going to be between these two coaches? Right? Do you think line of scrimmage, line of scrimmage? Both of them are from the same system, mm-hmm. meaning that those are the run play action. Right? It's the same system. Mm-hmm. And it's the same system in Tennessee. They do more running because they got that beast man out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then they got A.J. Brown on the outside, right? So you got a home run hitter and you got that. So all of their chunk, they're, they're um, a physical football team and a chunk play passing team. They mm-hmm. don't spend a bunch of time nickel and diamond with, with you know, five-yard outs and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're concentrated on trying to stop the run. So there's a lot more throwing lanes out there on the outside. So I think that's the same philosophy that was in Indiana last year um, when Very when true. you had um, Jonathan Taylor beasting people, getting after it. Um, one of the better young backs in this league, size, power, speed, agility, everything. He can do everything from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And and that, and that's how they made, made it, you know, into the playoffs last year was basically running, running, Play action, T.Y. Hilton, play action, um, you know, uh, Pittman, many others that are out there receiver, and that and that's their MO. So I think I think that's what we're looking for, looking, looking toward. Now, the thing that gives us an advantage is that, yes, what makes the the Titans special is that yes, you have Derrick Henry, yes, you have a really good offensive line, but your quarterback is mobile. Mm-hmm. So therefore, they're elevated. They're 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 higher up on the scale than Indiana, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And now you give that dynamic to us now that Nick Sirianni in similar offenses has the more dynamic running quarterback. So now you have to give us that advantage and our willingness in offensive line play to be able to move it. But you got Brandon Books in there, and you got Kelsey in there, and you got Lane in there. We move. It. We're going to be able to move people. Yeah. So when we're able to move people and then you add the dynamic weapon of a quarterback that can move and can bench six, um, can squat over 600 pounds, like, like it's, 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 and then you, and then you got a couple, you know, home run hitters and miles and Boston and Kenny, like you got some playmakers. And I think that, um, I think that controlling the line of scrimmage and running ball, that's the matchup. And I think everything else comes off of that okay. chunk plays and everything. Cool. Sounds but good. it's but it's but there's but there it's the same. It's a play action offense. All right, run play action offense. I'm okay with that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only way we're gonna win, man. I, I said yeah. it. I said it early in the year. 
Yeah. The only way, the only way this team's gonna win is not throwing the ball forty times a game. Mm-mm. Like I can't be. I want, I like, I don't want a game where Jalen Hurts is over thirty or over 30, 30 um, throws. Like I don't, I don't want to see that. You don't have to. You don't have to. How many mm-hmm. times have you heard all of our offensive line complain over the years about not sticking to the run enough? Oh yeah, yeah. And boys, it's every year. Give him a chance, Mr. Lurie. I know you want to play, um, you know, backyard football, and you want to play. You want to throw it around the yard, and you want to look sexy and the statisticians and all of that stuff. Listen, running the football, running the football opens up everything. Mm-hmm. It's the easiest way to play football. Get people in the box, throw it over their head. It's that simple. That's so cool. <laughs> it's been that way, and it's been that way for years. Right? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's it. That have consistently won. That's that's how it, you do it. It's hard. It's hard throwing against seven and eight. Like eventually, somebody gonna touch the ball, and all, yeah. and that's all it takes. Somebody touch the ball. That's an interception. And if you and if you throw the ball forty times a game, you're gonna put the ball in harm's way at least ten of those times. Yeah, at least they can't catch on defense, so they're gonna drop eight of them, but they're gonna catch the other two. <laughs> hey, as long as they don't catch it, eight twenty percent catch it. <laughs> PBU count, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's they made the stat for people who can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, they can't catch the ball, so let's make up a stat. What we gonna call it? Oh, pass breakup. Oh, that's great because they really can't catch. So if they knock it down, we can give them credit for something. Their confidence can be high. Oh, yeah, man, that's, that was right, definitely man. the conversation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so wrong. Man. That's messed. That's messed up. All right, we we talked about everything. Now look, Zach Ertz, we've had. We've had we've had protect my homie, my ride or die homie Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz. <laughs> I'm gonna ride for my. <laughs> we had that Zach Ertz. Then we've had a blonde hair Zach Ertz that's been more California, and I'm I'm, I'm just a little bit weed smoking Zach Ertz that's more anxieties now. I don't know if he's smoking with age. I'm just joking. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just talking. But I'm just saying the, the one whose you know, anxiety is down and is more accepting of Jalen Hurts this year. And there seems to be some type of morale and some camaraderie and a chemistry that's cre- um, that developing between the two now that Zach Ertz realized that he can't control the situation. And, and which is a good thing. He can't control the situation. He's going out and play football like a professional um, if he's going to continue with the team this year. Um, what do you think his role is going to be? How do you think it's going to mesh well with the growth and development of Dallas Goddard? Dallas Goddard currently is seeking a contract extension. Are they going to make, uh, we know that they're going to make Goddard um, option number one. <laughs> there I ask. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you why I'm laughing, Q. You ever... You ever had your wife complain about like washing the dishes or doing the laundry? Don't answer this question because you, because you can just, <laughs> all right. So as guys, sometimes because we don't want to do it, we'll mess it up so they can keep on doing it. Yeah. <laughs> right so she tell you go wash the clothes you throw all of them in there black white green red tiles everything goes in the washer come out some stuff pink some stuff green some stuff every different color she said i don't never want you to do it again He's like yeah amen good all right i didn't want to do it oh, now we know that dallas is tight end number one but dallas is also the better blocker Mm. Usually tight end number two is the better blocker mm. and tight end number one is the one that runs the route. But that, so, so, so what's the motivation <laughs> for Zach Ertz? If he goes out there and blows a couple blocks, he's automatically <laughs> going to turn into tight end number one. <laughs> because, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So, yeah. so I begin to think about it like, man, all right, tight end number two uses the better blocker. But yeah. in this case, he's so not, I'm not going to say bad at blocking, 
but he's not the best at blocking. So you so you might as well just put him on the route. So he ends up being tight end number one by default. Yeah. yeah. And you end up, he's still, you know, <laughs> it's like the wife doing the laundry. It's like, ah, genius plan. Zach is playing chess. Everybody <laughs> else playing checkers. That's why I started laughing. That's because, probably why they kept stole. That's probably why they kept stole too, right? Because he can probably block better than both of them, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, so what I'm saying is that he's never going to be tight end number two in reality mm -mm. because there's no incentive for him ever to be that. Because exactly. you're going to put him in tight end number one position because he can't do tight, the tight end number two job well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so and that might be why. And I don't know how true <laughs> this is, but there's there's reports of either the Eagles are very far apart on what this contract's gonna look like. There's some reports of possible trade stuff going on. I don't know with uh Dallas Goddard. I don't it seems so crazy to think, right, that he would that how we would even consider moving on from Dallas when we have what's going on with Zach and so I don't know. There's some weird stuff going on, but I wouldn't be surprised as if uh, that was by design. You know, miss a couple blocks here, there. You know. ah. <laughs> Man, I miss, I mean, you missed that. Dallas, go <laughs> secure the backside. Ertz, you run the post corner. Yeah. Dallas is like, we'll do, coach. <laughs> <laughs> so, Genius plan. That's it, that was that, that was my boy Deshaun right there, Deshaun. <laughs> Now, this I was a big fella, but at, at some point, you got to say, do I want to catch this bubble screen and get my face knocked off, or should I just <laughs> let him run the bubble screen? I think I'll let him run the bubble screen. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we, folks, that's what we call business decisions, right? <laughs> Bus make, yeah, I'm like, there's business decisions on every DNA. single play in the yeah, NFL. I'm like, I'm like, because you're in two minutes, you line up in two minutes and you go to the nearest spot, right? Because you're trying to get the playoff as quick as possible. And you look out there and you line up, it's like, oh man, this ain't good. This is not a good situation right here. I got Deshaun Lee blocking for me. <laughs> like, this is not a good decision. So the first thing I'm thinking is, I'm um, hopefully this ball ain't high. If the ball is low, I'm running back to it and I'm just going to abandon his block and just head for the line. <laughs> Oh man, defensive. That's like if I you know, say I got lined up in a zero coverage and it's just me outside with Tyreek Hill, right? I'm calling timeout. No, <laughs> time I don't out care time. how many we got left. Even if we don't have none left and it's a penalty, I'd rather take the penalty. Oh man. <laughs> you uh, facts. Hey. Man, you you know, I regret. I should have like I wish we had the autonomy in our offense. I remember the game we lost to Green Bay in the playoffs. The one that um, Mike, I don't know what Mike was thinking, throwing the ball up to um to Coop with the game on the line, a rookie oh, in that I situation. That, yeah. I like I don't know what, and I and I told him the whole series, Mike, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, Mike, <laughs> throw me the ball. But um, and that on that series, I had um, I had Clay Matthews because we went no help. I had Clay Matthews on me twice. I caught the ball twice, made some gains twice. But I was like, man, why don't we have the like the authority just to run a go route? Like, because mm -hmm. I'm not gonna just run. I'm just I'm gonna run at him and stop him. He like because he was running. He he guarded me like three times the game. I made him fall like twice. And the next <laughs> the next time he was trying to call a timeout. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> and they snapped the ball. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, why can't we just run a go route? Like, how do we get this matchup? Let's let's run a go route. Take advantage, right? Yeah. You know, he probably telling that story somewhere, and it's, a, it's completely different. Yeah, it's completely than, different. Than, than I, I, locked, I was locking up receivers out there. <laughs> he only caught a five-yard game on me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Hey. I ran the most basic stick route. You know the little five-yard <laughs> stick out? I ran the most basic route, and it was like second and 18. And because uh, <laughs> I remember – you remember Marty. Marty, you you remember Marty used to try to go for a deep a deep play every game, every every play. It was, <laughs> but every every at the opening of every game for about fifteen games in a row, he tried to go deep no matter what they did, no matter if they've sent the house, no matter if they knew it was coming. He just had enough pride. He's like, dude, I got Deshaun, I got Jeremy out there, I got you know whoever else. We are going deep. That was his mindset. Um, so we ended up after doing one of those play actions sacked <laughs> in the second eight team. First play of game, play action. Play action. Everybody know we don't. 
We don't yo, know like that. <laughs> yo, he did it like three times backed up and it worked like three times. <laughs> Play action from like the two <laughs> Deshaun, 60 yards. Oh. Yep. The um all right, so so we we've talked about most of this. I'm I'm talking about the my X factor, and then we're gonna we're gonna to wrap this up. <clears throat> Devonte Smith. Let's talk about Devonte Smith. Yeah. What's the realistic expectation? To me, besides what we know, the offensive line is the ultimate X factor. Yes. But what are we going to get? Are we going to get a top ten play now, eight to ten, twelve touchdown guy? The one thing that this dude does well is find the end zone. Yeah, absolutely. He's a touchdown machine. You know how hard it is to get 49 touchdowns in college? Like a receiver? Like, do you know, like, do you know the, the greats, the all-time greats are in their 20s? Ooh, wow. The all-time greats in college are in their 20s. Just think about it. your freshman year is mostly a waste. You're going to catch two or three. Maybe yeah. your junior year, you, you get up to eight. Your next mm-hmm. year after that, you get up to eight, right? You're at 19 there. The next year, you get up to eight. Yeah. You know what I mean? 27. Like, that's, the, insane, the, that's like to get 49, he was balling, balling. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, is that the dude has a, a knack for breaking tackles. He has a knack for route um, route running, and he has a knack for finding the end zone. So, I'm hoping that he can be a top 10 pick. Lord, have mercy on us with a receiver that would pan out. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Can you imagine? Right, a drafted receiver, a drafted yeah. receiver that pans out, it, yeah. and and we haven't had one since Jeremy Macklin, Deshaun, you know that era, that range. Yeah, you know. I, so I think he's gonna have he's gonna have a great game. I have a great game. I think Fabian gonna... Monroe, baby, Fabian hey. Monroe, <laughs> Moral, yeah, Fabian, right? Fabian Moral, Fabian. Yeah, it's you already called it right. The secondary. The secondary shouldn't even be trotted out on the field, right? If if all in my opinion, I think I can see him going for over a hundred and one or two touchdowns. Over hundred? Oh, easy, your easy expectations money. high. You think he gonna have a? You think he gonna yeah, have? I believe eight 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 hundred to a thousand. That's what you're saying, basically. Like hundred, over a hundred. Hold on and, we, we're not putting all that. We're, I'm just talking about game one. Oh, the man. Two touchdowns. <laughs> eight, I, I'm already, I'm just looking. It's 17 games. If he can get 100 yards in the first game, he got to be able to give me – all he got to do is give me 60 after that and get to a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's our receivers, man. That's why – see, y'all – You receivers are the ultimate optimist. Every single play, y'all are open. It does not matter who's on you, Facts. what coverage it was. You guys are open on every single play. I coach at the high school, and I coach the receivers. Every single play, my receivers, they, hey, coach, I was open. He can't see me. I'm like, <laughs> it was a run play. Still can't see me. Uh, I'm practicing my releases on run play. That, <laughs> that's what I did. I would practice my release to see what he would go for in a run play. <laughs> That's yeah, actually real smart. Bro. Yeah, you got to see what he's going to yeah. go for. Because, you know, especially if it's man, he won't know until, you know, you're out of that release. Yeah. You know, so you're like, oh, this is going to he, he gonna go for that. Yeah, he's not going for that. I got jammed, but nobody knew it because the run play. <laughs> 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 you try new stuff on run play. Yeah, you got to. I, yeah. I see it. But All right, so on prediction. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm asking you. I I threw my, my craziness out there. Ah. Uh, right. You talking about for you talking about for Devontae just, or just for just anything? Just anything. What's your bold prediction for the game? Oh man, or it could be players. We're three and a half, right? We're three and a half under players. Mm-hmm. Um, my bold prediction is that uh, Joshua has two two sacks. Ooh, okay. Um, so that's my bold prediction is that Joshua okay. has a breakout. I'm I'm here in the NFL type of game. Okay. Because it's his 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 play his play num his play count has increased right his his playing time has increased, so I think that's a bold prediction. Um, other bold prediction is that the Eagles have over 150 yards rushing. Ooh, now we're talking. 
Okay. That's the, so I'll, I'll say those two as my, my bull predictions is that, and, and, and as far as, as far as score the game and as far as who wins the game, the Eagles lost three. We've lost three out of four down there. So I, I don't think this is a layup at all. Mm -hmm. um, two new coaches to, I think the team is optimistic, but I'm going to give the Eagles a narrow victory in 27, 24 birds. Okay. I'll take that one. Let's go. On. Yeah. I give them a, a narrow victory. We're up. They 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 score a touchdown to get us close. Get get the game closer. We recover on side type of close. Okay. Yeah. I think I agree with you. I think it's gonna be a three point game, but I think it's gonna be higher scoring than that. I'm gonna say Eagles 34, 31. Dang, we win in shootouts. I think it's gonna be a shootout. Where's our defense? Our beloved defense. Hey, it's Matt, Matt Ryan, man, and and. And this is going to be added to it. I see we're going to go over, over under. I think we're going to go over nine blitzes. Nine blitzes? Yeah, on our defense. So he so, said, so this so we're going to go, pull, we're going to blitz over nine times. Doctor. Yeah, that's that's pretty bold. Nine, nine blitzes. We've never, we it's haven't, blitzed, we, we haven't blitzed nine times in the past three years. <laughs> We're, we're due. We're due. <laughs> no, so to, to be honest, with two years ago at the Falcons, it was like he blitzed. He was blitzing like crazy. Short to it. When down there, when when Julio caught that screen and win the game. Yeah. He was blitzing like crazy that game. Because Matt, because Matty, and, 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 to, and yes, we're going to have overnight blitzes. Because stats show that there was a stat last time that they played that Matt, that Matt Ryan um, is a significantly, um, worst quarterback against the blitz like so his his numbers are so much lower against the blitz like when people get pressure on him so i, I remember that stat from before so i agree with you i there think you that's go. gonna happen q man it's always good to have that conversation with you we are always having fun again to all the fans out there thank you guys for tuning in to the q a podcast on inside the birds platform jeff adam hunter everyone back at the studio that's taking care of us. Thank you guys so very much. And to the fans, thank you again. Q, you got the last word for the people. Thanks as always, man. It's always a great time. And, uh, you know, for for all the support, all the great support, <clears throat> much appreciated, guys. It's been great. It's going to continue. Go keep having fun with it. Let's do it. Peace.